Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the Monolith to Microservice project with Golang series. So we are building a Monolith and a Microservice project at the same time. And so that at the end we'll be able to compare uh, you know, the entire structure, how they work and all of those things. So we're, comparing, uh, we're building both at the same time in the same project. Now we have a Microservices folder which has some logic with Microservices. We have a monolith folder here, which has some obviously some more logic with the monolith. But then there are some there are some things that are common because since we are building like a like a you know shop uh, kind of a service here, so which will have shop and payments and orders and all those things. So some of the logic between the monolith and microservice is going to be common, and we need it to be common, and that's because that's how we'll be able to basically compare both of them, right? So the common code sits here in, in the package folder. Most of the code that's here is going to be common between the monolith and the microservice, all right? So we've worked on our uh, these two folders a little bit previously. And what I want to work now on is this common code, specifically starting from the shop part. Shop is basically going to have your products, right? So that's what we, what we mean by shop is, it's a place where you keep your products and all of that. Now this uh, project series, in case uh, you're not aware, this is for experienced developers only. Uh, if you're a, um, a beginner developer, it'll be very difficult for you to follow along. The reason for that is that we'll um, be using interfaces here. We'll be using interfaces, we'll be using advanced structs, we'll be using methods, uh, and they can get a little complicated, right? Uh, and we'll be using like a repository, uh, a pattern where we basically use a repository uh, interface. So it's a, it's a very common pattern. A lot of people use it uh, in the code. I've also used it in the DynamoDB Bulletproof CRUD API project. So that's what we are using. So uh, it might become a little difficult for any um, beginner developer to follow along. But if you're very interested, feel free to keep following along even if you're a beginner, no problem. Uh, but I don't. What I don't want to happen is that uh, you end up confusing yourself. So don't uh, you know do that. So that's why I mentioned that it's for experienced guys only. Anyhow, having said that, having said and getting that out of the way, uh, what I'm saying is that I'll be continuing this project series until till closure. We'll try and complete it in the next few days. Um, so let's start from here. Let's start from application products. So here in the shop application products are cool. <clears throat> You already have some code written, right? You have the read model, which is an interface. You have the product service and the new product service, which is basically going to help you add products, right? And the most important things are these two, the add product one and the all products, like getting the list of all products and basically add products. So um, what's going to happen here basically for add product? Let's work on this function because this is kind of simpler and easier to start with. So you know that it's not a function, it's a method, right? It's of product service. And <clears throat> product service itself is, uh, is having a repo and a read model, right? So now add product is um, going to accept and add product command. So this method accepts an add product command, right? Now you'll have to define what an add product command is. So add product command, since it's not given to you by Golang, it's something that obviously you'll tell Golang that this is what an add product command is. It's obviously a struct, right? Structs are data types that you can define on your own. So you'll say type add product command and you'll call it a struct. So to add a product, what do you, what all do you have? You have an ID, usually it's a string. You have a name, again it's usually a string. Then you have description of the product, right? That's also a string. Then you have price in cents, and then you have the currency. Right? will be integer, this will be string. Uh, let's format it out a bit so that the 
space is locally consistent much better I think all right so now comes the add product uh, right so you have this add product command which you have defined right now and we're expecting that this will accept that so what's going to happen here is you'll create a new price first you'll say cmd dot price sense comma cmd dot price currency okay so there is uh, inside package there will also be price right and that's what we are accepting out here now as soon as you talk about this price you know that this, this needs to be a function somewhere new price and there's already a place where we can create it as a function and that is in your package folder there's a common folder right there's a price folder and price.go file is there and this is where our um, function for new price will exist so i'm just calling that function here even though the function doesn't exist but uh, we'll just after this we'll work on that function okay now um, along with creating a new price when i'm adding a product right to memory there are three things i need to do i'm adding a new price i'm adding a new product so there will be a new product function it needs to be somewhere right and what all will it have it will have id so cmd.id it will have cmd.name by cmd i am saying these things right at what command it will have a description and a price so it will have cmd dot description and price right only here there will be just one small change and this will be consistent with products dot id now this products is a package and this function also will be in that products package okay so so you'll say here products dot new product and here also for price you'll say price or new price so what you're saying here essentially is that products is a package and we're calling it here but we haven't defined this package yet we haven't talked about this package yet and um, that's not a problem because inside domain folder is where we'll have this products package and we'll have all the files related to that but I'm just telling you where we're going to be using it because if I start working on the price package, if I start working on the products package directly without showing you where it's going to be used, you're going to get confused. You're going to think, uh, why are we you know, working on this? What, what kind of pattern is this, right? Why are we creating these files? This is why I want to show you that, hey, we need something called as a price package because we want this function to be there to create a new price. Mm -hmm. We want a products package to be there because we want to create a new products. Uh, we want to call this function, new product. And at the end, after you've done all this, we want to save that product to the memory. To save that, we're going to have a repository kind of an interface, right? To work with our uh, memory, we'll have an interface. It's going to be available to us using repo. And that repo will be with product service. Why? Because S is a type of product service. And product service, as you know, as a repo and repo is basically products or repository and we want to work on products or repository because products is our package that we haven't worked on yet okay so i hope all of that is making sense a little bit sense at least you don't have to understand everything right now but i hope that's making a little bit sense okay so um having seen these three things right you are probably wondering you know where is this products package and let's start working on it you're probably you know eager to work on it so let's do that let's actually go to domain and go to products.co create a file called products.co but we're not just satisfied with products.co right we also want the repository we want the repository to be there so we'll say there's one more file called repository.co which is also part of the products package by the way okay so this will have so we are assuming this will have a function called save, which will help us save that product. Now, um, that takes care of the products package and it will have all of these things also, right? Products, repository, all of that. But there's also a price package. So let's take care of that as well. So in the price.go file, 
out here you want to first say it's package price so let's do a little bit of work in the price package let's do a little bit of work in the products package and both of them we can start uh, keep building together for now all i need is errors here in the import statement and for now all i need is to define a price now price is not something given to us by golang so it's something that we're defining so the way the best way to define something uh, or define your own data type is by using a struct so price is a struct basically it has two things as you already know by now because we use it in um, this file it has to have price and currency right so now when i write out here price and currency it makes it just makes more sense to you um, where is the file again yeah so it says sense and we'll say currency okay and we'll have to have a function let me close off all the other files so that it just becomes cleaner so we have to have a function called new price right obviously that's that's a given you have to have that function now so you'll say func new price So it accepts some things, it returns some things, and this is the function definition. All right. So this is the complete outline for the price.go file. And this is where I'd like to end this video at least. And in the next video, we'll do some outline for outlining for these uh, domain products. And we'll have a slow pace. We'll cover a little bit of parts, but every day we'll do uh you know like make a 10 minute i'll make a 10 minute video on this for the next few days so that every day you're learning a little bit you're not doing too much in just one day you're learning a little bit but also because the com the project is little complex it has so many files and folders that i don't want you to get confused and um and that's it from my side uh do log back in tomorrow tomorrow will be a new video for this uh, series we'll work on the domain products all right so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video